Hello friends, welcome to today's episode on the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we are going to be recapping everything we know so far about the Crown Tundra. Now, before we get into it, like I mentioned in the last video, I do just need to say if there are any of you out there that don't want any spoilers, any leaked information getting into your little brains before the Crown Tundra drops tomorrow, click away now. You've not got long to wait. Um, but literally wanted to put this video up today just because the Crown Tundra is out uh, in a little under a few hours for most people. Uh, I've still got a little bit of a wait here in the UK. I believe the time for when it will drop in the UK, going off information from when the maintenance stops on Pokemon Home, which we'd assume is the correct time, will be about 5 a.m. Friday morning, tomorrow morning uh, of recording right now. So 5 a.m. I will be up, I will be playing, I will be getting content ready for you guys uh, and enjoying the game. I can't wait to play, but getting into today's video, as I say, we wanna just recap a few things. So first thing we want to look at is if we go over to VG24, they uh, dropped an article yesterday in regards to the Dynamax adventures. We've got a bunch of uh, additional information. Now this isn't a leak, so to speak, this is officially confirmed. This is a, an official article. Then we're, so we can call it the link will be down in the description if you guys want to take a bit more time because we're just going to go through the main bulk of the details here so if you want to catch those legendary pokemon obviously uh that aren't going to be in the main storyline then you will have to go through dynamax adventures where the majority of the pokemon are going to be available the legendaries now we know this information already uh we do get some additional game footage here as well dynamax adventures explain clearing the pokemon dens to catch legendary creatures so while you can catch some new new and returning legendary Pokemon in the core story segments of the Crown Tundra. To get access to a range of classics, you'll need to take the Dynamax Adventures. Now we know this, Pokemon fans might understand this feature if a, I simply say it in many ways as acting as a replacement for the wormholes in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So yeah, we all know about the Ultra Wormholes from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Very fun, uh, works along the same kind of premise as these, although you're gonna be battling Pokemon along the way rather than dodging uh, um, other wormholes to get to that wormhole that you want um, and it works on the same basis that you are only going to be able to catch one legendary per game so once you call that legendary in the dynamax adventures that's it you're not going to be able to catch it again in that copy of the game if you've got two copies of the game it's fine and i'm sure there will be ways to maybe manipulate this uh, i already have some ideas in my mind and i will try this out and if it is possible to do with one copy of the game be sure do hit that subscribe button because I will make sure to create a video on it and, and do all the steps to guide you guys through it as quick as you can. And I'm pretty, I would say right now I'm sitting on the fence of 95% certain that we'll be able to do this uh, and get more legendaries with one copy of the game. But we'll wait and see. Anyway, getting back into this here. Uh, Dynamax Adventures are four-player uh, co-op co mini dungeons where a team of players tackles a series of Pokemon battles of increasing difficulty. All battles are Dynamax battles, so if you've been tackling raids out in the wild area, Isle of Armor, uh, Crown Tundra, you'll be familiar with how these four-on-one giant battles work. Just like raids, you can tackle these battles with AI partners, but you'll be better off with real people, which is which makes more sense. I mean, any of you guys out there that have played with other people, you know how much easier the raid becomes if you're with actual people rather than the Warbuffet AI that does literally nothing the entire battle. So it kind of handicaps you a little bit. I'd imagine this is how it's going to work here. Uh, this sounds pretty simple, but within the framework, Dynamax Adventures apply a number of rules and effects that mean there are no normal Pokemon battles. These twists are best summarized in a list below so we can see every player is limited to only one pokemon you don't have a party so you are going to be using rental pokemon that are available to you and um, to take into the dynamax adventure you don't use one of your own pokemon well we've just explained that um your hp move pp and status effects carry over from one battle to the next now that is very important that means if a pokemon gets uh, battered in a fight then you'll go into the next six, uh, significantly disadvantaged uh, because of the Dynamax battles the damage output can be very high which we already know so it's this gets very risky uh, once you defeat a Dynamax Pokemon in one of the raids in the den you can choose to swap your Pokemon out for one you've just defeated now that's quite nice so this exists as a counterbalance to carrying over status between battles swapping is a play 
get to your uh, to get your strength back up however only one member of your team can take a defeated pokemon so you'll need to work out with your teammates to decide who gets it and so that's quite nice so not everyone gets the option uh, if you beat a pokemon it is kind of just that one pokemon that you're going to be able to to bring into your party and then um, move on to the next stage so i guess if you're playing with three other players it's kind of discussing it there must be a way to discuss it between yourselves uh through the Dynamax adventures that'd be really nice if there was like a, a way you could link up your mobile phone and then maybe use uh, the, the the Nintendo facility online there to hook up with mics and speak to your your Dynamax adventurers uh, and then decide together so that's quite cool um it does become quite difficult I guess uh the goal is to work your way through the lair and I'm guessing there is four stages probably four stages so each one of the party members probably gets the opportunity to uh get a new pokemon before you take on the final the final boss uh the final raid legendary and uh, the goal is to work your way through the lair uh there are branching choices along the way which will direction you will go will decide uh, by players vote so you all vote again i could be walking around the dungeon it's simple board game style map where you choose which path to take and turn uh, determines what your next pokemon encounter is that's pretty cool okay uh, if you're lucky you might encounter a small random event along the way that might provide healing or other assistance but other than that you're on your own okay so you might get some sort of help along the way which is good um and for the tougher ones i'm guessing it's going to be difficult uh the db google the rare the pokemon you battle and catch and there should be a super rare or legendary pokemon at the end should be should be am i reading into that too much should be so there might not be uh, according to this but the most likely will be uh, at the end of the dynamax adventure demo we saw generation 4 psychic type legendary yuxi uh, was waiting to take players in a final dynamax battle at the end so that's cool a uh, order is simple at the end of the adventure you can take home your current pokemon Okay, so the Pokemon that you're renting, you're able to take home. That's interesting. Uh, that can be one of the ones you picked up along the way, or it could be that you swapped for the legendary at the end and take that reward home. Okay, so you're going to get the choices. So whatever happens, if you complete the raid, you're going to be able to get one of those Pokemon. Either the rental one might be quite good. We don't know what the, the rental Pokemon are going to be like yet. Um or the legendary now that if you can only get one legendary it makes sense if you can only catch that once you can probably do the the raid then again but then you're not going to have the opportunity to catch it you're just going to be able to take the rental as a reward so i mean it doesn't defeat the purpose of doing it if they are quite fun uh crucially each player will only get uh each legendary once which we've already mentioned we knew that already that's similar to the wormholes in center moon yep already done that ahead of you uh you'll also get rare item rewards like the new ability patch item which lets you swap pokemon's regular ability for rare ability okay now we did theorize this that this might be an item that you get access to through these dynamax adventures now this is really cool so uh you're going to be able to utilize this facility to basically farm these ability patches um uh, which is these ability patches obviously change a normal ability into a hidden ability very useful uh brand new item that we've want we've needed for such a long time so that's a really good way to do it uh, and quite fun as well as for available legendary pokemon represents of the pokemon company tell us that more or less every past legendary is available through dynamax adventures but as with raids there will be version exclusives to sword and shield depending on which game you have you need to partner up with a host of players of the opposite game in order to catch them okay so that's interesting we're gonna get uh version exclusives per version now that makes sense because obviously that's how it always has worked uh each version does have a different uh available pokemon um so we're gonna have to team up with other variants and other games and things like that which makes it a lot more fun and it brings the whole premise of the pokemon and kind of interacting trading training with other trainers into effect so that's interesting four lists of what is available in each game we don't know yet i'm guessing we're gonna have to wait a few hours till the crown turner drops and we'll have that information um so that wraps up dynamax adventures pretty much all the information we've got on those so far they look a lot of fun and i'm really looking forward to playing them i'll be streaming lots of these things and and with having been lucky enough to have both sword and shield cards it means i can go through and do multiple legendary pokemon so getting on to other news in our last video we did an update from our good old friends at centro pokemon leaks who dropped a bunch of information about the new legendary pokemon uh calyrex forms and the two 
new horses now this is leak territory here nothing's been officially confirmed but uh, you can pretty much bet that this is going to be what the games are going to give us so uh yes they released the official names of the new horses so we've got the um obviously the ice type the white horse uh which is the the wild horse pokemon is its type um is called glass glastria glastria I don't know that's how we're pronouncing it but that's how we're doing it now um and glastria admits intense cold from its hooves it also uh it's also a belligerent pokemon anything it wants it takes by force glastria has tremendous physical strength and the mask of ice covering its face is a hundred times harder than diamond okay so there's some interesting information there they must be the the pokedex entries i'm guessing its ability is chilling nay um, when the Pokemon knocks out a target, it utters a chilling nay, which boosts its attack stat. So pretty much a bit like Moxie, um, which is which is a strong ability, really strong ability. So that's the white horse. Then you move on to the 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 dark, the black horse, uh, which is called Spectia. Uh, it's a cool name. Obviously, it's a ghost type. Another wild horse Pokemon. It probes its surrounding with its sense save one. Uh, it doesn't use its sense of sight. Spectia's kicks are said to separate soul from body. This is very strong. Uh, as it dashes through the night, uh, Spectia absorbs the life force of sleeping creatures. It craves silence and solitude. An ability is Grimne. Uh, when this Pokemon knocks out a target, it does a terrifying nay, which boosts its special attack. So obviously the ice type um, Glastria is going to be uh, physical, you would assume. And then Spectia uh, is going to be a special type. So it's a special type Moxie as its ability. Now things get even more juicy as we go on. We get a bit more about Calyrex, which is a king Pokemon. I uh, get the Poker Dex descriptions there and then move on to its ability on Nerve. Uh, plus chilling nay which is a for the first time ever with these a fusion pokemon when calyrex fuses with uh glastria it creates calyrex ice rider which is the high king pokemon um and according to law this is a pokedex entry according to law this pokemon showed no mercy to those who got in its way yet it would heal its opponent's wounds after battle now it does get a combined ability which is the first time we've ever seen this this is a fusion pokemon with two abilities it gets unnerved plus chilling nay so that that is a combination uh, so it gets all the effects of chilling near which is the attack boost if it knocks out on a pokemon like moxie and then also gets unnerved as well which makes its opponents unable to uh, consume berries it's crazy first time they're doing this it's a huge huge news and the same goes for the calyrex obviously the shadow rider when it um merges with the uh spectria it becomes obviously uh, the Shadow Rider Calyrex form, another High King Pokemon, um, and then its ability is obviously unnerved plus the, uh, the the Spectia's Grim combined to boost the special attack when it gets a knockout, which is pretty nuts. Uh, and then they confirm that we obviously get the the Regieleki, the the Pokedex numbers there, uh, Regidrago. Glastria, Spectia, Calyrex, Calyrex Ice Rider, and Calyrex Shadow Rider. And that's all the new Pokemon for 2020. So that's that what they say. There's a new Pokemon. Then we get a bit of information about uh, Regieleki, which is his ability Transistor, uh, powers up electric type moves. So that's really, really strong, especially if you can combine that with something like Electric Terrain. Um, and Reggie Drago gets the same dragons more to as its ability uh, powers up dragon type moves so working the same so very very strong abilities for these two new Pokemon coming in um, and that wraps up about all the information that they were releasing for um, obviously we get the, the pictures the high res pictures of uh, all the the new Pokemon um, and I, I wonder if we've got any there we go so there is the uh, the Shadow Rider and there is the Ice Rider renders so um, yeah, we do. That's all the information that they give us for the Crown Tundra. There was a bunch of information about other things that have come out. Obviously, the um, Sword and Shield beta um, data mine has been leaked. So there's all that information about the uh, the, the beta copy the, the before Sword and Shield was finished. Lots of interesting stuff in there. 
I'm not going to cover in this video um, and some other stuff about Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. So, I mean, a bunch of stuff and all like super interesting. Um, but that wraps up about everything we need to know for going into Crown Tundra. I'm like, very excited about it. As I say, there's not m long now before the games actually drop. And um, it's been a good day and I'm looking forward to it. Hope you all have had a great day as well. Hope you found this video useful and some of the information useful. Um, of course, this is just a little recap of what we've got over the last few days, as well as to say that I will be covering a bunch of stuff in the Crown Tundra. I'm ready to go with it all. So we'll have a busy, busy time over the next few weeks on the channel, maybe a bit longer, um, playing these games, getting to know everything, trying to work the easiest ways out for everything and how to get them and all that. So. Have a great rest of your day. I hope the wait isn't too hard. There's not long to go, friends. Uh, let me know what you're doing to fill your time while you're waiting on the Crown Tundra. I'll obviously be sleeping, setting my alarm very early to get up around 4.30 to just to get ready to play the games. And um, I look forward to catching up with you all very soon with lots more content in the Crown Tundra. So um, thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourselves. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.